Yo, 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 this is Chris Blair. I'm sitting in the bar having a beer, and I just had a awesome, absolutely awesome Monday morning, uh, my time here in Japan. Um, for anyone who knows who follows me, because I'm, not, I'm actually not a big sports fan. I know a lot of people get this impression that I'm like this massive sports fan. And I grew up playing a lot of sports, and I like playing sports, but I'm not a sports fan. In fact, I don't even follow the Olympics. I don't follow, I didn't, Japan, the World Cup was here. The Rugby World Cup was here in Japan. I, I literally watched just one game the entire time, the entire World, Rugby World Cup. It just happened that I was, there was a couple of internet marketers in town from Australia. Guys I know, they wanted to, you know, we got together for dinner and they wanted to watch the, a rugby game, so we had to go to a bar and watch the rugby. And it literally was the first rugby game I ever sat down and watched from start to finish. I'd never seen rugby. I mean, I've seen it, the lips of it, but never actually sat down and watched a rugby game. And I think it was, um, I remember it was England or Ireland versus Tonga. Right, I remember a beautiful hit in one of those games. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, that guy, one guy got, got his got the ass. I mean, that was just an incredible hit. They kept throwing over again. Anyway, I was really fascinated by rugby because when I watch rugby, I, can, I mean, they, they say, according to history books, that rugby and American football come from the same game. And it's, I mean, just watching it. I mean, it's the first time I ever sat down and watched an entire rugby game. And it is, I mean, of course, now it's different because in American football, you can forward pass the ball. Um, you can't do that in rugby. And, there's all, and it's set plays, and, and there's not as fast action paces as, as, as rugby, right? But you can see, I mean, it. I mean, the way the whole field's set up and the way everything operates, it is definitely very, very similar as far as, as coming from the same game. I didn't make this video to talk about, talk about rugby. I, I'm, you guys, so anyway, I'm not a big sports fan, as I said. I'm not a sports fan. I mean, I'm, not a, I'm, I'm like following sports passionately. In fact, I don't follow baseball. I don't follow rugby. I don't follow soccer. I don't follow anything. There's only one sport in the world I follow, and, and that's American football. And I'm, but I am like diehard, like super passionate American football. I wake up, this morning I woke up at 3 a.m. Japan time, and I, wa and I watch some, a bunch of the games. And so every Monday morning during the football season, I do this every single Monday morning late, where I wake up in the middle of the night and just, my girlfriend thinks I'm insane. Anyway, so, yeah, I'm not, so but the, thing is, the way I look at it this way is, look, look, I mean, guys, I don't fall sports at all during the, re the rest of the year, only during the American football season, which is actually one of the shortest sports seasons in the world because it's such a violent game. So I, I get my sport watching in a short time period of time. But anyway, today was just amazing. I mean, just amazing. Amazing. I mean, the games were so tight and so close. And there was some, two major upsets. And it was just so much fun to watch. And so... To me, waking up on, on a Monday morning, 3 a.m., and, and, and enjoying some incredible football for the next six or seven hours, and then getting to work a little tired, I'm cool. I'm going to go to bed early tonight. It's a good Monday for me. Anyway, so that was not what I wanted to talk about this, guys. I mean, actually, that was a little bit of a filler story because I wanted to um, get more people to have time on. And, you know, and I want to talk about something that's the uncomfortable truth, okay? The uncomfortable truth that... that a lot of newbies don't want to hear. Even a lot of proven sellers don't want to hear. And I actually have a good friend named Russell who doesn't want to hear this either. Russell and I are really good friends. We hung out in Montreal together and I love the guy. I love the guy. And we've had this discussion before. And it's actually, I don't dislike his app, but I don't like the way it's being used. Okay, so the app itself is awesome, used in the right way. But it's being used the way it's being used by all the different sellers, and not just his app, but many different app creators who create a similar app, right? There's a few of them. You guys are screwing yourself with this, the way you're using it. You just are. And I, and, and I, I told Russell this. I said, look, if you use it the right way, it's awesome. It's in fact an incredibly powerful tool, but if you use it the wrong way. So what's happening here, okay? What, what is happening? What is happening? These are the spy software apps, okay? And so, it doesn't matter where you're going after dropshipping products, you're going to print on demand products. What is happening is people are doing what I call winner chasing. Winner chasing. So what I mean by that is, okay, so some people some few people start selling a product, right? Whether it be dropshipping or 
Sorry. Put it in the van. That was my first beer, so I'm not, I'm not drunk. I just had a, I'm not, just a little gas thing happen. My apologies. All right, so people are, people are using the software to go out and find products they're currently selling. And they're, they're modeling them, and they're not only modeling them, they're, they're, they're basically not using any creativity at all. They're copying these exactly. Copying the ad copy, copying the video, copying the product. And there's a whole market of gurus who are actually teaching you to do this. And it's setting you up for failure. I mean, that's the honest truth. It's setting you up for failure. And why is that? Okay, why is it setting up for failure? Well, because there's no reality in that at all, okay? And on top of it, if you can find it, so let's just say you find a hot product that's selling like the last two weeks. If you can find it, so can every single other drop seller and pewter seller who's, who's in the marketplace doing the exact, using the exact same apps, okay? Now, I'm not fully discounting the idea of modeling, right? Do be do some things to be different, okay? So let's just say that you, you let's just say that I'm actually going to suggest an even better strategy, but here, but um, let's just say you use these these. Your, and I think for newbies there is some merit to this, but as a more experienced seller, you get you get a strategy on the next level. But let's just say you're going to use these, right? And you're a newbie, and you really you you, you don't have the, the creative knowledge, or you don't have the the coaching or the trainer like me to, to guide you in the right way to to come up with cool unique ideas then fine, yeah, use these, but still, strive to be different. Okay, so let's just say that you go out and you find that this, this uh, POD tote bag, right now, tote, I'm giving you, dropping you a hint right now, tote bags are selling really well, tote bags. You can get them in many, Custom Cat, T-Launch, Pillow Profits, all these companies have tote bags. Women are buying tote bags for Christmas like crazy. It's insane, by the way. I, it, as it, you should be able to make thousands of dollars with the hint I just gave you if you know what you're doing. If you don't, you definitely need my course of mastermind because if you if you can't take that hint I just gave you and make thousands of dollars, you don't have enough knowledge in in this business, and therefore you definitely need my econ band course of mastermind. And so, so what they're doing is they say, okay, well this this person's got this design on this bag, and I'm going to go out and grab the exact same design and start it marketing. Well, that's what everyone else does. The thing is, though, here's the deal. Okay, I have on my beer store a cap that is my best selling cap. It's been, I've been selling it for years and years and years and I'm still selling it now for four years. I've literally had people, and this has happened twice, and it, it, it really boggled my mind. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But anyway, message me and say, Chris, hey, I, here's my hat. I modeled it after you. Well, model is bullshit. They took my, they fucking ripped off my design, which is robbery, and they're selling the exact same cap. But I'm not making any sales. What am I doing wrong? Well, there's so many things you're doing wrong. But the point is that, first of all, I'm just a better marketer. I got a better brand. And I've had a beer site for years. And I've got, I've got so, much, so much leverage over you guys. I can easily crush the competition. So it's, it's not, not even smart to go in, in to, to try to sell the exact same thing I am. But, but they asked me this question. And so... So what am I getting to? Tons of people, well, the, the few market leaders, right? Big brands, not, not obviously not Amazon side brand, but bigger Shopify stores, um, using Facebook ads, right? Who know what they're doing. They're my course to mastermind. They're my private coaching, right? Know what they're doing, right? They know how to run ads properly. They know how to, to use images properly. They know how to run, you know, to do all that thing, right? They've, they've built up a community, right? They're going to crush you, right? And yet you are actually chasing the exact same thing that they're selling. You're actually trying to sell the exact same thing. You're not even using any creativity whatsoever. Okay. Now, let me, if you're watching this video and you say, Chris, I want to sell the exact same idea hat for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you some hints here. Okay. What, here's what you do. First of all, go out and create your own unique design. First and foremost, your design should be different than mine. Okay, if you try to compete with me on the exact same thing, I'm going to crush you. Absolutely. Okay, and and if but if you have a cool design that's unique and maybe better than mine, then you have a chance to make some sales. Okay. If you try to rob my ad images, first of all, I can report you to Facebook and get you banned. 
in a heartbeat. It's easy. I can prove that I, I've been posting this, advertising this thing for a long time, right? I don't think I'm going to do that because I just, I don't, I'm not into chasing people who are make, not making, you know, it's not, that's not my thing because, you know, to me, I got more important things to do. But anyway, that's possible, right? So if you rip off someone's ad image or video exactly, they can actually get you banned from Facebook. Please keep that in mind, right? They could actually report you get you banned, okay? So, but the point is, you just, you're not doing anything to position your product different. So let's just say you have a dropship product, okay? And dropship products are, not, are less about originality. They're more about finding stuff that, you know, obviously I think you should go after original products, but, and there are ways to do it with dropshipping as well. In fact, I'm gonna drop in this video, I wasn't planning this, I'm gonna drop two ideas. One for POD and one for dropshipping about how to find original ideas. But let's just say you take the exact same product, right? That someone else is selling. Well, if you use the exact same ad image, exact same video, first of all, you're, you're, you're breaking the terms of service with Facebook and get in trouble. But number two, they've got, a, they got, a, they got an advantage of you because they've been running this already. And number three, everyone else is doing that. Everyone else is doing that. Everyone else is going out and copying that. So why not make your own original video? Why not find your, create your own ad image? Why not order, order it, order it, right? Get it sent FedEx to your house and take your own photos of it. There, if you use your own creativity and originality, you can actually position yourself better to sell the exact same product someone else is doing, okay? All right, so. So why do I hate spy software? Again, I don't hate spy software. It's great. Is it incredible market knowledge can be used about the spy software about learning about your niche and the things that might sell and things that have sold, right? So you gain market knowledge to come up with your own original ideas. And that is how I use it. I I use spy software. I just told you in one sentence. I hate spy software and I use spy software. But I use it in a different way. I don't use it to go out and say, I'm going to rip off people's ideas and go out and sell the exact same shit. I use it to keep up on what my, what's selling in my niche so that I can come up with my own unique ideas of stuff that could sell. Because to create original ideas, you need some knowledge of your market and your niche. You need that. Okay. Now, let me give you some ideas of how you can come up with some original products. And by the way, I'll be honest with you right now, this is just a slight sliver, a slight tip of the iceberg. We have seven hours of training across the mastermind about different ways of finding products that are unique. Okay. But let me just give you two. Okay. We'll start with drop shipping. Okay. So drop shipping. Let's just say we're selling okay, photography necklace. We'll just throw out a photography necklace just for example. I want you to go to AliExpress and I want you to type in photography necklace. I want you to sort by best sellers, and then I want you to go to page five and start searching from there. <coughs> because why page five? Let's explain this. Okay. Ninety-nine percent of the people who, or even hundred percent, well, actually, hundred percent of people look at the first three <coughs> entries. The rest of ninety-nine percent are going to look at the first page. You go to page two. You're going to eliminate about about thirty percent of people, so you got seventy percent. You go to page three. You're going to get about. 50 to 60% of people not looking. So you give it half the market looking. You go to page four, you're gonna get the rest. And by page five or page six, every single person in your niche is gonna forget about that. At least the lazy people. There'll be, there might be a small number of people. And I want you to start looking at these products and look at these opportunities. Well, Chris, wait a minute. These are not proven sellers. You just said opportunities. That's right. Exactly. The fact that they're not proven sellers means they're opportunity. Okay. That means that not every single asshole in your niche is selling these. It doesn't mean that, that not every single seller in your niche is selling these. It means that these are opportunities. But here's the thing. You need to know your niche. I mean, by the way, if you, I want you to turn this video, if you run a general store and you believe in this idea of a general store, I want you to turn this video off and don't even continue on. Because here's what you're doing if you're in a general store. You're putting up, I'm using tissue, but I'm using uh, napkins, sorry. 
you're putting you're putting on a blindfold and you're just throwing darts at the board. And you might get lucky. Occasionally someone does. Because there's so many darts being thrown at the board. But unless you know your niche, your odds of consistent success is, is so low that your success will be short-lived even if you find it. Okay, so if you have not, if you've actually took the time to research and understand your niche, understand, create an, a, a product, a, an avatar of your customer, right? Understand what memes, videos, content, value add content that the product's been selling for the last couple of years, right? You understand that, then you have the ability to go to AliExpress and look at page six, seven, eight, nine. Guys, I'll tell you something, man. One of my best selling, I don't do a lot of drop shipping um, these days because of all sorts of problems. In fact, if I ever really hot selling drop ship product, I just buy it in bulk and I have a center for film center, but with all the other problems you could have with drop shipping, right? But my last big seller that I was doing traditional pure on drop shipping, okay? In other words, I was actually going to AliExpress. I didn't bulk ship it, right, to a film center. I was just literally ordering from AliExpress or, or sending them Excel files, right, okay? We sold over Christmas season from, from October to December 5th. And, and guys, I'm going to say a number that's going to blow your mind, but it's absolutely the truth. 18,200 units of this is 18,000 turniers of this one necklace, okay? Now, I found this necklace in the grandma niche on page 14. I re always remember this. It was page 14 of the search. Now, you're asking yourself, so I started by bestsellers and I got on page 14. This maybe had maybe one or two reviews and that, and the, yeah, exactly. But I had been selling in the grandma niche since 2013 with Teespring. Mm -hmm. I had years of knowledge in the grandma niche and I looked at that necklace and I said, holy shit. The only reason why this is not selling is people haven't noticed it hasn't been marketed properly. So this is why market knowledge and understanding is so critical. And yet, you know how much time people send marketing research? Most people's definition of market research is, oh, I'm going to go out and spend an hour on this. I'm going to look at a few memes on the other people's fan pages. I'm going to use spy software. And they're okay. Woohoo, I did it for 45 minutes an hour. I know my niche. You know what? I, I, I don't care if you think I'm rude, but that's a big wank. I'm, I'm, some women are going to be really offended by what I just said. And that's fine. I don't care. I'm not out to please everyone. I, I want to work with people who are seriously hungry. Male or female, right? And, and if you don't like my attitude and the way I talk, I don't give a shit. Because I only want to work with hungry people, and this is a filter. I only work with people who really, truly want it, and that's what I want to work with, okay? So, so the, the, the way most people research their market, it's a big wank. That's all it is, okay? And, so, and they wonder why they don't have consistent success. All right, so that was a drop shipping methodology, right? Okay? Now, next, let's talk about print on demand, okay? And I've, I've mentioned this one several times, and I'm gonna keep mentioning this, and this is just one of our secrets of, 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 of many. But here's the thing, when I search out a product idea in the beer niche, which is one of my niches, one of my two niches, I actually search ideas outside my niche. I'll search anything but the beer niche. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find ideas of hot selling slogans or expressions that I can put on a t-shirt, hat, bag, tote bag, or whatever, some sort of unusual product, right? With our own unique design. A key, key, key here would be unique design. Don't rip off some design. Number one, a lot of people are doing that and they're not having success. Number two, it's actually illegal and you get in trouble for it, okay? And I'm trying to tweak these ideas and these expressions that come from other niches. I'm trying to, to turn them into expressions and ideas from my niche because that sets me apart. When I come with a good idea, then it's unique, right? And guys, here's the thing. Be very, very careful here, okay? If it's too easy, I can almost guarantee you it's been done over and over again. Let me give you a couple examples of that, okay? I like beer, 
my dog, and maybe three other people. I guarantee if you go to Google search right now, you search, search, I like my, I love my dog, or I like my dog. Three other people, and maybe, I lo- I'm sorry, I love beer, my dog, and maybe three other people. That shirt has been done over and over again. You could easily take that phrase. I like, I love surfing, my dog, and maybe three other people. I love fishing, my dog, and maybe three other people. I love badminton, my dog, and maybe three other people, right? I love... So, so the point I'm trying to make is if the expression is so easy to twist and treat your niche, that's a big, big red flag. That is not unique. Let me give you another example. And it's on the same, same um, genre, same, same idea. But I've seen this over and over again. Um, you make me happy. Or, sorry. Excuse me. Beer makes me happy. You know so much. Fishing makes me happy. You know so much. Surfing makes me happy. You know so much. My grandma makes me happy, you not so much. Okay, so this idea is, it's too easy. So the, the idea of going to another niche and, and tweaking this idea to make your fit for your niche is awesome, it's powerful. And, and if you can find something that's not been done over and over again and you can sort of come up with, use your own creativity and, and come up with a good idea, then you can seriously come up with something powerful. But if it's super easy to tweak, twist, that is a big big red flag that tells you that hey wait a minute here this is too easy okay so probably it's not something unique and awesome and awesome right all right guys for those of you who thought that was awesome i have to be honest with you, you haven't seen anything um you need to do one or two things number one i suggest you go to ecomvantage.com for slash vip join my course and mastermind put the link in it below um or you sign up for my private coaching if you see my private coaching I have different options private message me and we'll see what else we got here. Cool, cool, cool stuff. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Not a lot of questions coming in on this one, so no worries. Cheers, my friends. Thanks for watching the video. To watch the next one, click right here. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button right here.